Now in Grand National Steeplechase Day at Flemington on a heavy track, let's check the results. First on the program went to Tango Master, a big effort to win from a wide gate starting 7-2 to two equal favourite. Wandering Duke won the hurdle race number two, handled the going well and a strong win starting at 9-4 to four and favourite. Third was won by Hazar's pick at 7-2, outstayed them and a very good ride by Gavin Eads. New Zealand's best jumper, Noble Heritage, was sent out a very short 13 to 8 favourite for the Rich Grand National, but it was another Kiwi which outstayed them all. 12 year old Prince Lindell led the field out. Counting hurdles, it was his ninth Nationals appearance, a record. But it was too much for the old bloke. He was the only one who failed to finish the gruelling 5,000 metres and 28 fences. When the jumping was all over, it was left to the tough New Zealander, bar the shouting, and Valiant Gamble to fight it out. In the last 150, Valiant Gamble the rails and bar the shouting, they're both doggedly tied. Bar the shouting and Valiant Gamble. Bar the shouting has his head in front. Valiant Gamble trying to bridge the gap, but the New Zealander, bar the shouting, draws away again, wins three quarters of a length. Valiant Gamble is second. 15 For Davina Waddell, it was a moment to rival the thrill of winning with the top three-year-old Isle of Man some eight years ago. I actually, I'm just absolutely great. <laughs> he certainly looked the horse to beat, say, 800. And bar the shouting starting at 11 to 2, in fact, has trebled his prize money since uh, arriving in Australia. Both Noble Heritage and Direct Mail failed to stay. Now the Winter Championship final and a big run by English Charm. Vages fought back again, again got his head in front of Bronze Knight. Now Duke of Oakhill closing on the outside with 100 metres to go. Duke of Oakhill got to the lead and here's English Charm. After the checks, he's flying home, grabs the lead. This is a mighty win. English Charm wins it by about a neck to Duke of Oakhill. Bravado. Run third, then came and a very big run by English Charm after getting a check at the start. She scored at 9-2. to two. Greg Hall made it a double scoring the next race on My Avon Star. It won on protest at 6-1. to one. Now the second leg of the double. ...into close, then Braquillo. It's Sungi Wong getting the romantic game with 150 metres to go. Right on the outside, Worth I mention is coming home very late, but Sungi Wong the leader to romantic game, Worth I mention and Braquillo, and Sungi Wong goes on to win it. Sungi Wong is first. It's a photo second and third, Braquillo and Worth I mention hit it together in front of romantic game, Captain... Sungi Wong at 7-2 to two in favourite, well supported, and Ernie Marchant's first ride for the new team, booting home a winner. The last went to Just Jezebel at 12-1 to one over Y Scarlet, and singled out. Daily double today, four and eight, thirteen dollars twenty. The extra, seven and five, twenty-one dollars forty. The uh, quadrilla paid fifteen hundred and forty-three dollars twenty, and the quad extra, three thousand and ninety-five dollars and fifty cents. Well, veteran Flemington race caller Frank O'Brien has called his last race at the track, and to mark uh, Frank's uh, retirement, it was uh, the last race was named in his honour. Racing in the last and why Scarlet jumped all The last the race at Flemington today will be remembered for more than just the results. Just Jezebel is packing too many guns for the opposition and Just Jezebel salutes the judge from why Scarlet singled out. Dubbed the doyen of commentators, Frank O'Brien has called 21 Melbourne Cups. The hardest, he says, was in 1976 when Vanderham came out of a maelstrom to win. It was run after a, a torrential uh, rainstorm and the colours were virtually impossible to pick and uh, the jockeys were covered in mud and it was a real nightmare to call it. But anyway, we survived. I made a few blues, but I got through OK. So I was very thankful when it was all over. Frank started calling more than 37 years ago when just a teenager in northeastern Victoria. I used to uh, enjoy uh, doing broadcasts of boxing contests and uh, the kids running up and down the driveway and so on. And then after I left school, I... Uh, did the local races at Alexandra and I went on from there, but I was always mad keen on sport. Frank will go on describing them at Mooney Valley, but replacing him at Flemington from next week will be the ABC's Greg Miles, for whom the older caller has nothing but praise. Oh, that was me. Good on you, Frank. It was uh, a great career and, of course, it continues at uh, Mooney Valley. Finally, a reminder of the ABC's live coverage of the third test at Edgbaston tonight.
Jumped in front, the New Zealander. Valiant Gamble's under the whip, and eight direct mail. We'll soon know who's the better stayer. Bar the shouting, Valiant Gamble. Valiant Gamble back to the rail, and Bar the shouting. There's not an inch between them. Valiant Gamble on the fence, and Bar the shouting. Valiant Gamble might have superior speed on the flat. He's joined Bar the shouting. Bar the shouting, Valiant Gamble. Whips are cracking. Bar the shouting just in front of Valiant Gamble. And Bar the shouting's going to win the Grand National Steeplechase. Bar the shouting's outstayed Valiant Gamble to win a length and 20 lengths. Started 11 to 2. Two, ran third in the National Hurdle, of course, from Valiant Gamble. Eight's direct mail, 11 to 2. Noble Heritage, disappointing at 13 to 8, favourite. Yes, there was big raps on him uh, from New Zealand. It was his first, uh, first run over the big jumps here. And I thought he just raced a bit keen early, and, and on the first lap he, he risked a couple down the back, and he, he was all, he looked uncomfortable, mm, you know. Yeah. Uh, direct mail, uh, our promising young steeplechaser, he, he just failed to run out just the gruelling 5,000 yeah, yeah. metres and uh, boy they were tired horses getting to the line weren't they? They were indeed. And unfortunately the old horse, uh, they had to pull him up. Yeah, uh, Prince uh, Lindell. Prince Lindell, mm. yes, he's uh, ninth attempt at a national, he led the field out yeah. and unfortunately come back in the tail of them. So. Okay, the next on the program, an English champ put up a Kiwi performance here after getting interfered with it was last at the 400 metre mark. Knight moved up now on the outside to join all spades at the 400. Running on Bravado, getting out, I'm a red man. Duke of Oak Hill joins in wide out. They're followed by Young Vigilante. Duke of Oak Hill, the widest runner's coming with a paralysing run. Duke of Oak Hill's raced up to all spades. Bronze Knight dying on its run. English Charm's getting out of the ground. Duke of Oak Hill's grabbed the lead. English Charm from a mile back wearing down. Duke of Oak Hill, a fantastic run, English Charm. She's come from last and she's got there. English Charm from absolutes beaten Duke. Well, English Charm, 9 to 2 equal favourite. Good win, Roy. Uh, this was the run of the day, undoubtedly. Or da They only travelled about probably 100 metres, and uh, she, she was running about fifth, but just went straight back out of the pack. She obviously got squeezed and was a distinct last, was still last just prior to the home turn, and obviously looking as though she had no chance. And uh, really, her finish over the last uh, 400 metres of that race was definitely one of the highlights of the day. And, Greg Hall, well, once again, he didn't panic when he got knocked down. He let her find her feet, and uh, it's paid dividends. But, by gee, that was a performance. She will now have one more run, and she's going back to New Zealand to go to stud. Favourite one, the next protest was lodged. It was upheld, and we weren't surprised. To go and Pleasure Bandit's been wide but raced up with some kind of news beat to take the lead. On the outside, my Avon Star, the challenger, Mr. Crescendo, needs a runner. Highfield Queen getting out late over Sir Flint off the front runner, Pleasure Bandit. My Avon Star, Highfield Queen and Mr. Crescendo after Pleasure Bandit. Pleasure Bandit just in front, my Avon Star, the outside after Pleasure Bandit. Pleasure Bandit, my Avon Star, my Avon Star and Pleasure Bandit, my Avon Star going home at Pleasure Bandit tight. Might go Pleasure Bandit a nose to my Avon Star, but there's. Wouldn't disagree with the stewards' verdict there, right? No, I think it stood out, Bill. Mm. It was on a couple of occasions over the last 200 metres where you could definitely see them come together. Young Carmichael uh, on the horse that won the race and then lost it on protest, using the whip in the left hand. Mm. Uh, it's not easy for a young boy to change it over into the other hand. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice, but uh, something for him to think about. OK, Sung Ai Wang favoured in the next. Kings 400 to go, and a wall of them here. Romantic game the outside. Richfield's lad, Sung Ai Wong. New Orange back on the rails over Polydor and Jatova. Wide out on the track, running on as Romantic game reached the lead. Sung Ai Wong going with Romantic game. Romantic game and Sung Ai Wong down the outside. Briquillo, but Sung Ai Wong has reached the lead. Clarion Call coming with a run and from a mile back with a big run worth a mention, but Sung Ai Wong in front and Sung Ai Wong's got there. Sung Ai Wong's won a length and a half now. It's tight the mind. Sung Ai Wong, 7 to 2 favourite, battled on to win well, and the last race in the program was certainly a punter's uh, dis disappointment out and running on nearer the inside is Wise Scarlet, Just Jezebel, the front runner, breaks by two lengths, running on self-centred marathon star, Wise Scarlet singled out the rail, Just Jezebel the leader at the 150, running it down Wise Scarlet, self-centred the outside Just Jezebel a length in front, Rhinestone Lady from a mile back, Wise Scarlet's run to second, but Just Jezebel leads all the way to win, Just Jezebel by two Wise Scarlet second, single And out. Just Jezebel winning the Frank O'Brien handicap Yes, that was Frank's um Farewell, as far as Flemington is concerned, he's uh, uh, retired from race calling at Flemington. He's still going to officiate at Mooney Valley. And uh, young Frankie Stockdale, uh, which was Frank, the Frank O'Brien handicap, the young boy that won that race, was having his first, or rode his first winner in the Metropolitan area. Oh, so there's a yeah, coincidence, a spe there. especially if you backed it. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> Let's have a look at the doubles now. And firstly, the extra double for seven and five, twenty-one dollars forty. The daily double at Flemington, four and eight, thirteen dollars twenty. The quadrilla, five, four, double eight, one thousand five hundred and forty-three dollars and twenty cents. 
and the quad extra for triple eight three thousand and ninety five dollars and fifty cents yes it was a great day's racing and as roy you pointed out english charm was probably the outstanding effort of the day oh yes undoubtedly naturally um the the national is always a great spectacle uh, it was good to see the uh, old ex-jumping jockeys all out there yesterday yes. uh, by invitation from the VRC having a wonderful time. And it's a great spectacle, but uh, for as far as uh, the best run of the day, undoubtedly uh, was English charm. Greg Hall winning a double once again. OK, well now we're through the week. We've got, what, Sandown on Sandown Wednesday, Wednesday and we Wednesday. go to Mooney Valley for the big one, the Hiskins steeplechase. Yes, uh, it's going to be a good race, the oh, Hiskins, so, and it always is a good race too. Yes, and we certainly have, uh, we'll have the opportunity of seeing you there at a race course through the week, if not back here on Sports World next Sunday. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'll say good morning to you all. Stand by for that football panel.